and giving a presentation about your latest approach in minimally invasive um, surgery, especially with our mobile hybrid edition. Thank you very much for your invitation. It was a privilege to be here and to discover uh, your uh, great team. And I think you're doing a fantastic job. And uh, this uh, new hybrid solution, it's a real push forward. So I discovered uh, the uh, team technology when in 2016 I was supposed to do a live case, a TVAR live case in an uh, international meeting in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was uh, used to do all this uh, complex and vascular cases in a fixed uh, room in a, like in a, in a cath lab so I was amazed to discover the quality of the images and the versatility of the solution so I had to when we did this case we moved from the Congress to a peripheral hospital and we had like a brilliant quality of the image and you know uh, imagine myself when I was like seven years younger and we had to do this live case in front of 1,000 people mm -hmm. and with new technology but team didn't fail on me and uh, then I tried to find scene in Romania and, they, and there weren't any and uh, uh, it, uh, it was such a relief when the hospital manager announced me in 2022 that uh, he acquired the teen solution mm -hmm. for our uh, new hybrid cardiovascular room. So actually we built two extras cardiovascular rooms we, which were dedicated for endoscopic because I do a lot of minimally invasive heart surgery. and. Uh, <coughs> It was like a bonus from the hospital management that he offered me this hybrid uh, uh, solution. So we started uh, we started the cases a few months after uh, the product was uh, purchased, mm -hmm. and uh, it was as I expected, uh, very easy to use, brilliant quality. We didn't have uh, to buy extra screens. We use the screens, so that's one another step forward and another advantage. Is you just connect. Uh, the hybrid solution to your endoscopic screens mm -hmm. and imagine all the cardiac theaters that uh, are in the world right now and all the cardiac surgeons that want to do EVA and TAVI right now and uh, many of them can't do them because they don't have access to the cath lab because the international cardiologist or the international radiologist is there so they can uh, upgrade rapidly their uh, all the cardiac operating rooms all over the world to do for example TAVI I so think that's a uh, that's a great uh, and uh, huge step forward yeah. so do you see this as the main advantages uh, it's one of the main advantage uh, actually uh, this is why navigation is fading is falling in numbers because people are doing this only for the very complex cases like the fenestrated the custom uh, aortic solutions so right now navigations come back due to the uh, you give to physicians and to patients the right to have easy navigation again so with the team system it takes about less than five minutes you just do a <coughs> bone overlap with the frontal x-ray and here you are you have the navigation and you can do an EVAR case for example with only one shot of contrast I mean this is uh, really outstanding so this is the main advantages in um, regarding the combination of the two systems, so the so hybrid edition <coughs> and the Terenva and the North. You have like excellent image quality. Mm -hmm. You can put it in every operating room in the world. You just need a carbon surface. Mm -hmm. uh, you have this uh, fusion uh, imaging uh, capability right away with the end on out with like a fraction of the price of the fixed system. And we talk a lot about the fixed system, but uh, imagine we surgeons, we're not very comfortable when we go into the cath lab mm -hmm. because we don't have our nurses, we don't have our instruments, we don't have our anesthetists, everything is different. So right now we have like our operating room where uh, we work every day, where we have all the setups, all the stuff we need, uh, all the um, uh, stitches, the materials becomes hybrid. I mean, that's unique. So in the combination is the special thing, but also when we are talking about the different setups, so from a fixed installed system to our mobile system, so where do you see the challenges of those two setups, but also the advantages? 
So uh, I told you the, uh, as I told you before, the uh, advantages are in terms of uh, having uh, the thing ready to implement right away into your uh, operating room without losing image quality. Mm -hmm. And of course, one, uh, also a huge advantage is that you get lower radiation. Mm -hmm. You don't have to plumb your uh, walls with uh, lead anymore. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the other operating room can function normally so you don't have to do major structure changes in your institution you don't have to explode your walls for six months in order to to start doing endovascular yeah. procedure you just do it uh, right away and now there is a turning point in cardiovascular medicine when all the surgeons uh, that haven't started to do uh, hopefully I started to do endovascular TAV is like um, uh, more than 10 years ago when uh, everything started but uh, many of my colleagues realize they they should do it right now because they are losing patient and that's the way to go and they can just upgrade their uh, their uh, operating rooms with the tin uh, solution uh, right away in terms of image quality and navigation and I don't think there is uh, someone else that can offer this to doctors and at the end of the day to patients. Perfect, perfectly said, so thank you so much. Um, if we're talking a little bit more in general about cardiovascular surgery, what do you see also as a head of the department for cardiovascular surgery at the Sanador Clinic? What are the future and your goals and visions for cardiovascular care? So cardiovascular care is changing and it's changing roughly and it's changing every day. So uh, imagine when I started, uh, cardiac surgery like was a specialty where all cases were like five, six hours long by full sternotomy. Uh, people who were hospitalized for two weeks and uh, with a long uh, recovery. Thanks to uh, a lot of improvements, for example, to the appearance of uh, EVAR and the vascular aortic procedure, which were performed by Volodos and uh, Juan Parodi, uh, uh, AAA is not a drama anymore. So for example, last week I, I did two ruptured, uh, uh, one uh, ruptured AAA, one ruptured uh, uh, thoracic aneurysms, and the patient went home on day four. Wow. Uh, simple, uh, we do emergency TAVIS thanks to uh, Professor Alain Cribier, who was one of my mentors, and we were so sad to hear of his uh, loss one week ago. Uh, so imagine what Tavi br brought to our lives. So when uh, the first Tavi was performed by Professor uh, Cribier in 2002, okay. so it just sent a shock to <coughs> the entire cardiovascular world and everything changed. So surgeons start, stopped doing uh, full sternotomies. E everyone is started to do minimally invasive cases, mini thoracotomies, and or started to do uh, TAVI, like uh, with the interventional cardiologists on, on their own. Think also uh, at the endo size. Uh, so if we look at the benefits of this revolution, which was TAVI, so three million people were already implanted and were saved by uh, transcatheter valve uh, solutions, but also uh, the industry change uh, and the size of this uh, solution provided by Terneva appeared because of endovascular procedure and because of TAVI. And this was a huge benefit to, to patients. So I think everybody goes, uh, everything goes into the minimally invasive uh, pattern because uh, patients are aware of it and the more and more patients are coming uh, to my clinic and mm -hmm. they don't want to hear about classic surgical solutions anymore. And if you are not there, and if your institution is not there and is not able to provide it, to provide the right thing for, uh, for the patient, actually they are going to lose patients. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this is why TIN is uh, next to, to doctors and to patients because they can provide a rapid solution, uh, providing quality of image, quality of fusion, and uh, be ready for it uh, right away. Great. Great, thank you so much. So do you also see, as you have worked both in public and in private hospitals, uh, hospitals that this is a great solution for opening up those um, great, great case mix um, to the bigger popul uh, population? Uh, I think it's, uh, it doesn't matter if it's public or private. So <coughs> hopefully I, um, I worked uh, also in France. I, I did one year of fellowship in Canada 
So in France, I was a practicing hospitalier, like consultant mm -hmm. in, a, in a state hostel. In Canada, I was fellow in a state hostel. Uh, right now, I am in, in private hospital. So the most important thing is to provide the same quality of care to our, uh, to our patient. And hopefully in Europe, we have like a balanced private and mm -hmm. public system. So uh, this uh, is a benefit to, to patients because sometimes public health policies fails and the uh, public system doesn't have the, the funds to invest. And then you have private investors who build hostels uh, more often with less money than uh, than uh, public uh, funding when it, when it occurs, so uh, uh, the team solution is it's, uh, it's uh, an excellent solution for uh, both public of private, and it can be applied from the very beginning mm -hmm. of a project or when you want to upgrade an existing uh, hospital or uh, cardiovascular center. Great insight. So thank you so much also for this. Um, and also talking a little bit about you personally, so beside your great medical career, you did a fantastic um, sidestep into politics. Do you have, as the former Ministry of Health in Romania, some lessons learned that you would like to share as one of those innovative in, um, roles? Well, um, I did this sidestep into politics because I wanted to help patients. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's important for us doctors not to uh, sit on the, the bench and also to be part of the game. If we, uh, because our friends, uh, politicians, sometimes they, uh, and it's normal, they don't understand uh, the need of their patients because uh, there is so many things to be done in, uh, in politics. And we doctors, we need to step forward and to be part of the political world in order to have, uh, help patients. Because if we don't do this, the people who are writing the laws and the regulation aren't going to get the right uh, approach and the right information about, uh, about the patient's need and the need of the health sector. So uh, also, um, uh, of course, it was... Uh, uh, I was the Minister of Health for uh, six months during a very critical intense uh, critical period. So uh, my first three months were uh, focused on uh, health reform and then COVID-19 mm -hmm. uh, started. And maybe it was um, a good, uh, um, uh, it was good that I was there when COVID-19 started because I was less politician and more doctors. And if you look back at the numbers of those days, um, in Romania we reacted right away because I knew what the pandemic is and mm -hmm. I knew what the virus is. And uh, we closed the country right away because you remember beginning of 2020, we had no vaccine, we had no treatment, no uh, specific uh, antiviral, no monoclonal antibodies. Mm -hmm. So what we did, we reacted rapidly, we closed everything, we closed school, we did restrictions. And when uh, thousands worth of people were dying <coughs> every week in, uh, in, uh, in France, in Germany and in Italy, all the, their health system, the best uh, health system in Europe were, were uh, overwhelmed. In Romania, we lost our uh, first, uh, uh, we had our first patient on the 26th of February. And we lost uh, our first patient at the end of March when I was not the Minister of Health uh, anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, well, this why the first wave of COVID-19 never hit Romania so hard yeah. because we were uh, very well prepared. And uh, then I was no more, uh, I was not in charge anymore. And that's a different, uh, that's another no story. story. So thank you so much. Thank you so much also for joining us today. Um, it was a great pleasure and I'm very looking forward to work with you in the future. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you, Annie. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much.